So we're going to take a closer look at entropy on its own. Entropy is a thermodynamic function that increases as the number of energetically equivalent ways of arranging components increases. So this sounds very fancy, but remember, entropy has to do with randomness. So let's kind of pick apart what this is saying. So increases the number of energetically equivalent ways of arranging something and that will increase. So you have more ways of having a specific type of arrangement. And the more possible you, ways you have of this, whatever arrangement you're looking at, then because it's random, right? The more possibilities, then the more random it is. So that means that entropy is higher. Entropy is generally in joules per mole. So remember, it has to do with energy. Even if that doesn't quite click just yet, it's okay. I'm going to take you through something called microstates versus macrostates, which will kind of illustrate that idea better. So the definition in terms of entropy by itself is this mathematical relationship where the amount of entropy is equal to a constant a Boltzmann constant, which is this number um, divided by Kelvin, and then the natural log of W. W is the number of equivalent ways a system can exist at the same energy level. So this has no unit. This is basically the amount of possible states that you can have that are all equivalent in terms of energy. So random systems require less energy than ordered systems, which makes sense, right? In order for something to be ordered, you have to put energy into it for it to come together and kind of overcome a bunch of things like gravity and other things in the universe that make it difficult for things to be ordered. Um, versus something random and not ordered is kind of easy for it to happen in the universe on its own. This again is another visual of entropy. So here we have solid sodium chloride dissolving in water. When it dissolves in water, the ions dissociate from each other. So you end up having sodium and chloride ions in solution. Because we have uh, more states, right? We start off with just one solid state and these are just rigid as a solid versus whenever they go into solution, they're random, they're being surrounded by waters, they're all over the place, they're moving around free to flow. So this is higher entropy. Now let's take a look at what our W is. So we said W was the amount of states at the same energy level that a system can have. So here we have a gas that is expanding over this kind of very special um, glassware. But basically, we, can, we have a little valve where we can open this and allow the gas particles to either travel to the other side or we can close it to make it stay in whatever side it is. So for example here, this is closed off, so it's just staying on that side, the gas particles. Now, it doesn't matter in terms of potential energy whether the molecules are all in one flask or evenly distributed. But because of what the universe likes, one of these states is more probable than the other two. So here we have three possible states. We have state A, where all the gas particles are on the left-hand side. We have state B, where all the, the particles are on the right hand side and this is just like us leaving this open and letting them go wherever they want uh, leaving the little valve open uh, we have this state and then finally we have state C which is where we have two particles on one side and two particles on the other so the universe is going to favor one of these three states over the two other ones and it will actually favor state C so state C, we can think of it like a macro state. So kind of a zoomed out version of this particular state, 
And we're gonna go into what microstates are right now. So these right here are the microstates of the macrostate. So macrostate is like, think of it like a template and then microstates are all the different versions of it. So these are all those different Ws. These are all the different possible arrangements at the same energy level. So they all have the same macrostate. There are six different particle arrangements that result in the same macrostate. So these all are kind of positioned a little bit differently, you know, like they kind of look alike, but you know, somehow there's some difference in all of these. Um, so they're all unique. And overall, that's why you have six different microstates. Notice what's common in between them is that you have two on each side for every single one. That's the macrostate. Microstate is like the specific differences between these two, but they all have the same energy level. And now back to which macrostate the universe would actually prefer. This would be state C. So for state uh, A and state B, we only have one possible arrangement, right? One possible microstate versus for state C, we have six possible arrangements that will end up giving this macro state C. So this macro state C has the highest entropy and also the greatest dispers dispersal of energy. So C has the greatest entropy compared to state A or B. There is six times the probability of having state C macro state than state A or B. So basically there's more chances of having state A because there are so many different arrangements that will give you the same energy as state C. So entropy is actually a state function. We can calculate the overall entropy change by looking at the final entropy versus the initial entropy. And always remember with state functions, we start off with the final, we subtract the initial. That's common for any state function. So here, our delta S is our entropy change and it is favorable when the result is a more random system. So anything resulting in more possibilities, uh, more randomness, then that is favorable. And that is whenever delta S is positive. So positive delta S means that it's favorable. Now there are some factors that affect our entropy. So that's what this slide is demonstrating. We have reactions whose products are in a more random state. So when your products are either a liquid or a gas, these will be more random compared to the previous one. So we know like the order, we, we know the three states of, of matter. We have solid, liquid, and gas. Gas is more disordered or more random than liquid and liquid is more disordered random than solid and here it kind of says it the opposite of what I just said solid is more ordered than liquid liquid is more ordered than gas I said it the opposite so gas is the most disordered whichever way you want to think of it secondly reactions that have larger numbers of product molecules than reactant molecules these um, have an increase in entropy. So if you have, let's say, one mole of your reactant on, you know, that's the coefficient one, one in front of the reactant, turning into two mole of product, overall you have an increase in entropy because you have more moles on the product side. An increase in temperature will also cause an increase in entropy. So increase in temperature, think about how this causes molecules, particles, atoms, whatever it is, to move faster. So if they're moving around more, then they're more random. So this causes that increase in, in entropy. And then finally, solids dissociating into ions, which we kind of already looked at as an example. Sodium chloride dissolving into water, uh, dissociating into water. This will cause an increase in entropy because the ions are free to flow. They're floating around with the water molecules. Just try to visualize them. And basically that's 
where the randomness comes from and that causes the increase in entropy. So just to summarize what we just discussed, when your process has a final condition that has more randomness than the initial condition, the overall delta S of the system, the overall change in entropy will be positive and the entropy change is favorable, the process will be spontaneous, for the process to be spontaneous. So remember, the universe likes entropy, it likes randomness, it likes chaos. And then for a process where the final condition is more orderly, the delta S will be negative, the entropy change is unfavorable uh, for the process to be spontaneous. So overall, if you have a negative delta S versus a positive delta S, a positive delta S helps to contribute for a reaction or system to be spontaneous. A um, negative delta S does not help contribute for spontaneity, so you'll end up probably, like it will lean more towards non-spontaneous. And you'll see why whenever we get to Gibbs free energy, why I'm saying it contributes to, it doesn't automatically mean that it's gonna be spontaneous, but it contributes to helping uh, or favoring that process. So we talked about the factors that affect entropy change. Um, and one of those was whenever we go from liquid to solid, from um, liquid to gas, whatever the change in uh, phase of matter is, but we know that that affects entropy change. So when materials change state, the number of macrostates it has changes as well. The more degrees of freedom, meaning the more possibility of randomness that molecules can have, like if they can move around more, then that means they have more possible macrostates possible. And when you have more macrostates possible, that's more randomness, right? So solids have fewer macrostates than liquids, which have fewer macrostates than gases. So gases are the ones that have the most macrostates. And just think about how a gas looks. The molecules are moving around everywhere. They're just hitting the container. They're bumping into each other sometimes, they're just moving around a lot. So there's a lot of entropy. Here you can see kind of exactly what I was talking about, how gases move around a lot compared to liquids and then further compared to solids. And again, remember if we increase the temperature, that also is what contributes to a greater entropy. So you can see here how entropy is increasing as we increase temperature and also as we change from solid to liquid to gas. This is further um, kind of explaining the same idea where uh, the phase of the substance and also the temperature is what determines the amount of entropy. So basically gases have the most entropy out of solids, liquids, and gases. And here, you know, we kind of have just these comparisons. So between liquid and solid, solid has a lower entropy. Um, and between liquid and gas, liquid has a lower entropy. And then if you go the other way around, you know, the opposite is true. In this example, we are going to be predicting the sign of our delta S. So we are going to look at whatever situation is given and use the factors that we have learned about that increase entropy. So these factors increase entropy and we will apply them in order to see what's going on with these particular processes. So in A, we have one mole of liquid water starting off at room temp, which is usually right 25 degrees C, going to uh, one mole of liquid water at 50 degrees C. So the only thing that's changed is the temperature. And whenever you have an increase in temperature, this increases uh, entropy. So we are going to have a positive entropy. And this is because of that increase in temperature. For B, we are starting off with ions. Anytime you have ions in solution, this is very favorable because you um, have the matter dispersed, you know, widely throughout your liquid. And overall, 
you have more um, more moles. So for example, here, we have one mole here of this ion, one mole of this. This is favored over just one mole of your solid. So it's kind of several different factors we can apply here, but um, the main one is that solids dissociating into ions when they're dissolved increases entropy. But here we're going the opposite way. So this reaction will actually have a negative entropy. And then finally, for example, D, we are starting off as a solid going to a liquid. This is easier one. So solid is more ordered than liquid. Liquid is more ordered than gas. So if we're going from solid to liquid, then we have a more random state. So we would have a positive entropy.